This is a piece of a meteorite named Al Hagunia 10. It's one of the rarest types of meteorites ever recovered on Earth, and it's baffled scientists more than a few times. Al Hagunia 10 is an albright, a very rare type of meteorite made mostly of the mineral insatite. Albrights come from a parent body that formed under conditions with very little oxygen. Some have actually hypothesized that albrights might be from Mercury, although there hasn't been compelling evidence of that link just yet. However, it is likely that albrights formed in the inner solar system where oxygen was less abundant at the time. Now, albrights tend to be pale in color and sometimes almost a milky white. I've actually shown you a couple samples of those on this channel already, but my sample that you see here is decidedly not white though. It's almost the color of mud. That's most likely because it landed here on Earth and sat for quite a long time before it was discovered in the Western Sahara. So you're actually seeing the effects of weathering on that color that we would normally expect. Now, Al Hagunia 10 isn't just one rock. It's a collection of stones found starting in 2006 with more recovered later. The classification wasn't nailed down until 2019 because the material is complex and the science is still evolving. A bit of a plot twist with this one. The official record lists a 35 kilogram main mass referring to the largest single intact piece from the fall. However, another stone was found later and it was even bigger, 88 kilos. My sample you see on the screen here was cut from that stone. It's not entirely uncommon for these later recoveries to occur after an initial find, particularly in dense collection areas like Al Hagunia, which has a number of reported meteorite recoveries. Intriguingly enough, it's also likely that Al Hagunia 10 is part of the same fall that's classified as Al Hagunia 1, another meteorite I've shown you on my channel. Al Hagunia 1 has a different classification as an EL melt rock, but these stones appear very similar in composition and fell in a similar area. And again, their classifications have changed over time. The classification system isn't perfect and it is evolving. As far as I can tell right now, no formal publication of that pairing has been made, but that's science for the future. Hopefully one day we'll be able to link this unique meteorite to a distinctive parent body, but until then, it's given us clues about how the earliest planetary bodies formed differently in the solar system. Now, there's also a chance the classification changes as meteorite science evolves, but that's okay. Science is truly a story that never ends, and it's one that I enjoy following along. Make sure to follow along for more space rocks, and while you're at it, hey, why don't you share the video with a friend?